this is what you'll be thinking about as you think about my remarks, a specific group, a collaborative project, or even a membership in a specific department, something that situates you as part of the group. And again, as I deliver my remarks, I'd like you to reflect on this activity in which you're currently involved and try to see if the ideas that I'm presenting apply to that work or can apply to the work, okay? Um, after I'm done with my remarks, we'll go through the SOAR analysis. And my anticipation is that we'll have a vibrant and general discussion and that our UTO facilitator, Donnell, will help us in plotting out the SOAR elements so that we all take away something that's fruitful and useful. And thank you, Donnell, for, for being here as my partner. Of course, um, pleasure. So again, as we go through that SOAR analysis, you will apply the group project that you've identified or the group that you belong to, the work group, et cetera. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Technology, as everybody on this session knows, is powerful. I'm not there yet, so let's go back. Okay. It's powerful as a catalyst and an engine for change and connection. So just think about our ability to communicate in today's world. We can do so instantaneously with people all over the globe because of the technological innovations that have emerged in the past uh, several decades. Also think about the role that technology plays in movement and relocation of people around the world. So people from vastly different regions in a matter of hours can experience foreign cultures. They can reflect um, different social norms. They can engage or be exposed to different religious traditions, different systems of governance and worldviews. And we can do that both in person and virtually. And so there's this richness of connections that are made possible because of the technological advancements that have emerged. So when we think about technology, it really is a tool for enhancing life, quality of life, but also enhancing our exposure to difference. And by extension, when we're exposed to difference, we have an opportunity for growth in many arenas. I'll add that even for those of us who live in industrialized and highly developed nations like the US, there are new concepts that become available to us because of those connections provided by technological advances. And here is my launch point. So my goal today, and we can advance to the next slide here, is to introduce you to a concept from a culture very different from our own Western approach. One that is quite ancient for that matter. But because of technology, because we have printing presses, because we have shared information, because we have Amazon that allows us access to all kinds of texts that have been translated, um, we can create bridges across time and space. And so in this particular session, I will argue that we have the benefit of connection to and understanding of this idea that comes from an ancient space, an ancient time. And the concept I'm talking about today is pronounced Sewa. And Sewa is a Tibetan word that reflects a Buddhist concept. It does not have a direct English translation, but loosely we can think of Sewa as reflecting the warmth of one's heart. And some have also used the term radical tenderness to connote the meaning of Sewa. Now it is suggested that each of us has a fundamental capacity and indeed a need to radiate out positive energy to those around us, to have an open heart in relation to others. Sewa is something, is a capacity we're born with. It reflects a human need that must be met for survival. And although in your mind you may be thinking, well, this is positivity, how is that any different from love or compassion or openness? And in fact, I would argue that Sewa subsumes some of these elements and actually goes beyond. But I'll leave it to you to compare those meanings as we go through and as you come to understand this term. Now, we actually are very capable of practicing Sewa on a daily basis. And of course, with those we love, those who are, we are in direct relationship to or long-term relationship to, we do practice Sewa. Um, but in fact, say what can be invoked in all settings, even with strangers, even with coworkers, and yes, even with folks who have been challenging to us in the past. It simply requires a readiness on our part to direct positive energy outward towards others in our thoughts, in our actions, 
and in our words. So click and click again. Or thank you. And one more. So what does Sewa look like? Well, Sewa is reflected in caring and openness around positivity. And since our focus is on the workplace today, I'll, I'll direct my remarks in that direction. So in the workplace generally, and in group efforts specifically, Sewa can show up in a number of ways. For example, we might convey receptivity or openness to ideas that other people bring to the table, even when those ideas are novel or outside the typical boundaries of our expectations. Another manifestation might be that we offer spontaneous affirmations. We should just say nice things to people for no reason at all, other than it's a good thing to do. And we might offer encouragement to our collaborators, our colleagues, even when they don't necessarily need it, but it's part of who we are and we do so on a regular basis. Say we might also show up in practice through patience and enacting a welcoming spirit. And again, this can happen even when we're faced with difficult circumstances or people. So Sewa is not meant to be a reaction to others. Instead, it really is a sense that emanates from our own capacity. And in short, it's part of who we are fundamentally. So engaging in this capacity to radiate warmth out of our heart is really a way of self-fulfillment. It's a way of completing and bringing our full self to any situation. So according to Buddhist teachings, we fulfill our own essence and in so doing, we gain happiness. Now on the flip side, of course, when we block our sewa, when we are in situations where we're not radiating out, radiating out our positive energy, it turns out we're actually shutting out a part of the essence of self. So before I proceed, um, let me just pause and ask how many of you see elements of this type of warmth or sewa, this welcoming spirit in your current work or group context or project? So if you want to um, put in the chat whether you've seen elements, you can just put yes or no, that would be great. So this is good. A lot of people are in fact affirming that they recognize, they practice, they witness Sewa in the workplace. Um, if you do see the Sewa in the workplace, in your work group, within your group project that you defined earlier, what were some of the behaviors that you witnessed? Were there nice greetings? This here's one, listening, kindness in general, very good. Caring, collaboration patience for questions, absolutely. And sometimes it's easy to pull these off when you're in a face-to-face -face environment. It may be a little harder within the Zoom environment. So I'm wondering if some of these things hold, held also while we were engaged in virtual work. I love these, supportive, no hoarding of information, not, not interrupting, inviting people into the conversation, excellent. Now, when we practice Sewa, we have an impact beyond our own fulfillment. Buddhist teachings suggest that the more we cultivate the warmth of our heart, the light, higher the likelihood that we will benefit and help others. So when we're in that spirit, it puts us at the ready to help others. And the more that we do that, the happier we feel, and obviously the happier they feel. And in turn, those that are happier will then likewise open their hearts to others and become more likely to help and benefit other people. So the more help, the more happiness, the more happiness, the more positivity. And so what we end up doing is creating an upward spiral of positivity for everybody. And so the bottom line here is that by initiating your own sewa, your the own warmth of your heart, you can really compound a positive group dynamic and a better work environment for all. My position today then is that when we bring Sewa to our collective endeavors, we are indeed creating a culture of inclusion. We're able to more readily set aside prejudices, misconceptions, harsh judgment and insecurities and promote an openness in our work environment. And when there is openness and reciprocal positivity, the creativity and quality of our work is likely to share, to flourish, excuse me. So when we think about Sewa, it doesn't have to be limited to this Buddhist concept. 
but we can actually embrace it as a tool for organizational effectiveness. Just to be balanced here, when what happens in the absence of SEWA? And I think it, it would be easy for you to infer, and you would be very accurate in understanding that the teachings around SEWA tell us that when we do not express our warmth, we instead experience contraction, a closing off of oneself from others, a constriction in our thinking, and much less functional interpersonal dynamics. So in such instances, instances and in the context of group work, we can probably see say, the absence of SEWA um, in the following forms. People will criticize others. They will make sniping remarks. They will withhold key information. So you will see a plethora of microaggressions and other less supportive behaviors. And I suspect that this makes sense to you all because given that you were able to type into the chat the positive aspects of SEWA, if we flip those around, that's exactly what happens when SEWA is not present in the work setting or in the group setting. And so I will simply say that such conditions when SEWA is absent do not benefit anyone, let alone the group and its productivity. Are there any striking examples of the absence of SEWA that you have witnessed? And more specifically, beyond examples, what was the impact of those um, behaviors? What were the feelings that emerged, your own or in others? And how might it have influenced productivity? Sometimes there's a fear of retribution, passive aggression, leaving people out, retractions, shutting down from the group. Who wants to work in a context like that? So there's a breakdown of trust. Uh, how do we know that SEWA is relevant to contemporary spaces and times? As I said before, this is a, a millennial old concept. But in fact, we have tons of research that has been done in the 20th century that confirms, for example, that helping others leads to a higher degree of, of happiness and gratification for the giver. So that old adage of it's better to give than to receive really does bear up in terms of research. We also know that reciprocation is a powerful social norm. So radiating positive energy outward is likely to attract positive energy back to the self. And research also tells us that isolation and stress in the workplace, in contrast to creating community, is detrimental to one's health and also detrimental to one's productivity, whereas allowing for the expression of warmth is beneficial to promoting a sense of belonging, and that is more likely to be result in creativity and productivity. So I'll only add that science is a wonderful tool, even when it arrives much later than spiritual wisdom, and even when it presents findings that are disjointed rather than combined in one elegantly simple package. But I'm not picking on scientists because I'm one myself, so I, I represent that group. The bottom line is that there's tremendous evidence for the value of SEWA, and so it makes sense to practice it with intention in your workplace and in your work unit. So what next? I'm sensitive to time and I can't believe how quickly it went. So let me just jump to the last slide here. And, um, oh, these are benefits. So we've already talked about that. I'm sorry, I was one behind. But these are some ways that we can practice SEWA in, the, in your group, in your unit, et cetera. We can engage micro affirmations, say nice things just to be nice. And sometimes people are ornery and, and they're old codgers and they don't believe in doing this thing. But if you extend that hand first, they're likely to do it back. Approach to work with an open heart and open mind. This means engaging in perspective taking and trying to think of how others are approaching the work, providing guidance in a gentle sort of way, being a mentor to others. And this goes in all directions, age-wise, areas of expertise, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there may be many other ways. So I'm going to stop here and only say that three of the themes of this Empower Conference included empowering student and employee growth and change, one, collaboration across the university, two, and improved work-life balance. So my question now is how do we take this concept of SEWA and address how it can fit these three theme conferences, and moreover, create a SOAR analysis that identifies strengths, opportunities, 
aspirations and possible results that we can see. I think SEWA can contribute in many areas. I hope you agree. And let's pull up the SOAR analysis worksheet, Donnell, and go yes. through each of the blocks. What strengths um, do you have or does your unit have that would allow us to uh, strengthen the practice of SEWA in the work that you do? And you can type it in in the chat or call it out and Donnell um, is happy to type it in. And Donnell, just to clarify, people can work on the different pages simultaneously? Yes, they can. Excellent. I like that. Why not make someone's day better when you can? And so for those of you who are more comfortable typing in the chat, we will capture that as well and then add it to the different quadrants. And Sandra, on the respect for each other and recognizing talents, do you see that as a current strength or as something that you would um, see as an opportunity or a result? In the group that, I'm, uh, that I have in my mind, that would be the strength. Excellent, very good. And that was me that typed in we ECT and I can't type in the document at all. <laughs> okay. I like the seeking out of everyone's voice as an intention rather than a hope. I bet. Is that an aspiration or a strength, do you believe? Um, I guess it could be either one. You think we currently do it or does it is it something we need to improve on? I think we actively do that, but I think it's always a good reminder to, to remember True. to keep doing it. Sure. I know it is not part of the SOAR analysis, but if anybody wants to include in the chat, because I would certainly be interested in learning this, are there specific barriers that we need to be attending to organizationally? And if you have any that you'd like to identify, either in the chat or send to me privately, I would, um, I would welcome that because I recognize that many of us have good intentions, but we don't always have guidance on how to uh, respond when there's a, an obstacle in the path. I used to, as a child, be told the classic statement by my mom, well, if they jumped off the cliff, would you do that too? And often she would say this in response to the fact that if somebody was bullying me or using obscenities, which weren't allowed in my home, mm -hmm. my inclination was to reciprocate with that strong social norm. And she made it quite clear that the values we have internal to us must be maintained irrespective of what's going on around us. And she was uh, one of the best exemplars of how to be respectful of everyone. I grew up in a very tough neighborhood and she made no distinction in terms of how she treated the church leaders versus how she treated the young children whose parents uh, had a lot of involvement with the justice system. Um, but the same thing held when other people were engaging in negative behaviors towards us, we were to maintain what we were taught. And so sometimes obstacles come out now and I remember what she says and I think, okay, I have to still radiate goodness. I still have to radiate positive energy. Um, because that really is who I am. That's who I bring to the situation. And that's really how we create better balance between our work and our values, our life values, but also a more positive environment in the workplace. So we will review the entries that you're um, making on the SOAR analysis and also the chat. And I will, I have the duty of reporting out. So I will try to be representative. Thank you, Dahlia. That was an amazing presentation. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Enjoy the rest of the conference, and I look forward to the continued connection.